welcome to this Acumatica tutorial. My name is Zach Mayer with the Mayer Group, and today we'll be taking a look at creating an inventory item using a high-level approach going through the stock item screen. To begin, we're going to be looking at the inventory workspace to find our stock item profile screen. If I navigate over to that workspace in the left-hand sidebar, I'm going to see my profiles in the bottom left-hand corner. Depending on if I am tracking inventory for my item or not, will determine if I'm using the stock item or non-stock item screen. The majority of the time we would likely be creating a stock item, so that's the example we're going to go through today, but just keep in mind those are separated screens for item creation. When I click on my stock item screen, I'm going to come to my inquiry view where I can see all of the existing items in my company. In this case, I have 288 stock items already entered in. But to begin entering a new one, I'm going to use my plus sign at the top to enter a new record. When I navigate into my item creation screen, first off, I'm going to need to provide my part number in the inventory ID field at the top. Once I have given my part number, I have a description that I can use for my inventory item that will provide a default for all transaction descriptions anytime this item is used. I have the ability to designate a product manager if I want to track a specific internal employee to be the manager of this particular item or a work group as well. As we move down to the general tab, one of the most important required fields that we have to select is the item class. This is a good way to group our items, but it also provides many default values across the various tabs of the stock item, depending on how much of your item class you've built out. So if I pick my All Others class here, we're going to see it's going to default the majority of our general tab. It's going to default what the item type is, whether it's a finished good, a component part, or a subassembly. It will determine the valuation method, planning method, my tax categories, posting and lot serial classes, some locations, and then of course my units of measure. Anything that is provided by the item class is a default, so I can still make any changes if necessary. Maybe my unit of measure is not accurate, and I'm going to track this item in gallons instead. I can absolutely make that change. It's just going to be providing default values. And if I want to take a look at those, I can always open up that item class as well using the pencil and see all of those values that are stored on the item class. If I like all of my settings that have been provided from the class, I don't have to touch anything else here. I can see the additional fields available are optional. So if I don't have a physical inventory cycle, ABC code, country of origin, those are not required. But if I wanted to store additional units of measure, so in this case I have each as the default base unit, sales unit, and purchase unit, but maybe I could also store this item in boxes. I would be able to configure that using the unit conversion table so that I can now place this item on an order using either a box or an each as my unit of measure once I've told the system what that conversion between the two is. Moving on to our pricing and costing tab. On this tab we can set a price class, price manager workgroup if any of those apply, and if we have a default price that we would like to populate on our transactions, this is the place to store it. If I'm going to have any customer specific pricing, customer price classes, or any other special pricing that would override the default price, that is perfectly okay. This is just going to be your baseline price that is used if one of those special pricing does not override it. I could then store an MSRP price or in this case only a last cost as a cost statistic and that is because I picked average valuation method. If I was using standard valuation, I could insert a pending cost here that would then allow me to store that standard cost through the update cost action. There is a process screen as well so you can update your costs in bulk. You do not of course have to go item by item. Our next tab is going to be our manufacturing settings. If this is an item that I will be building a bill of material for, I'm going to see that bill of material ID stored on the manufacturing tab here. Because I don't have a bomb yet, I would expect this field to be blank, but I could now go ahead and build that bill of material, and as soon as this part number that we're creating is set as the inventory ID on the bomb screen, that link will be automatically created. I can see a planning bomb ID, configuration ID if we're using product configurator, 
And then I have a couple manufacturing settings down here as well, where I can choose when this item is placed on a transaction, if I want to default the mark for production or mark for purchase checkboxes. That can be a really useful tool if this is an item you do not store on hand. So every time you're ordering it, you do need to send it into your production queue, or you might need to place a purchase order for it. We're going to see some production order default settings down below. If we have a minimum order quantity, maximum order quantity, lot size, or any manufacturing lead time. And we can see those settings in a little bit on the inventory planning screen as well. Warehouses. If we have this item stored in multiple warehouses, we're going to see each of those listed here. In this case, my default is the retail warehouse and I can set up additional on my warehouse details screen. I'm going to see a snapshot into the quantity on hand that is currently available in this listed warehouse. I cannot edit that value here, but once I am receiving that item in, I'm going to be able to look up that value from this screen in the future. If I wanted to see a more in-depth look at quantity on hand, your best place to look is going to be the inventory summary inquiry, which can easily be added as a side panel on the stock item screen as well. Moving on from quantity on hand, we can go to our vendors. And in this tab is going to be great for any preferred vendors that you know you purchased this part from. You can have an unlimited number of vendors stored here, line by line. And once you pick that particular vendor account that you know you're gonna purchase this item from, you can have a specific additional lead time value, minimum maximum order quantities or frequency, lot sizes, all stored for that particular vendor on this item record. So that does differ from the manufacturing component, but you have very similar fields available to track for the vendor. You can set the purchasing unit of measure you purchase this item from or in from that vendor, as well as a vendor specific inventory ID. If the vendor has a different identifier for this item that differs from our part number we're storing in Acumatica, this is the perfect place to store it and it will pull that automatically into your purchase order line items. Attributes are a great place to store any data that may not already have a good home on these other tabs. If there's a particular piece of information and you haven't found that precise field to store it in, we can easily create attributes that, that work as a free field. Whether you want that to be an open text field you can type in, a drop down value from predefined list of choices, all different options for how we could configure those attributes, but you can store all of that additional data as well as some sales categories or images on this attribute tab. Packaging is going to be where we can track the weight and the volume of this item as well as the units of measure that we want to measure that in. If we have a commodity code or threshold percentages we want to set, that would all be stored on packaging. Cross references can be really powerful for barcoding as well as our alternate identifiers. So we talked a little bit about the vendor's part number on the vendor tab. We could also store that information here on the cross reference. So there is the option for a vendor part number where I can then select my vendor account in the vendor or customer column and then provide that vendor part number in the alternate ID. But I can also use this cross reference tab to set customer part numbers. So if a particular customer account has their own part number for this item, I can use it. It's gonna have the same functionality as the vendors where it'll pull that value into a sales order and I can always print that on a sales order confirmation report if I wanted to do so. And then we can also use the cross references for barcoding. So if you plan on using barcoding for any of your forms across Acumatica and you wanna store that barcode value, you can easily do so using the cross reference tab with that barcode type or your G10, EAN, other options down below. And then we can store that barcode value in the alternate ID field as well. Related items allows you to connect multiple inventory items in the system. So if you have an item that you want to be able to cross sell, substitute, upsell, etc., this is the place to do it. So maybe I don't have this particular item in stock, but there's a good substitute part that's very similar. I can track that here by picking any of my other valid inventory IDs that are already in the system track quantities, effective dates, if there's an expiration, maybe you want to require an approval, if you want to make that substitution, that can all be configured as a, rela a relation on the stock item screen. Inventory planning has some similar elements 
to what we saw before from the manufacturing side as well as the vendor specific order preferences. Here we're setting the source of this item. Do I replenish it by purchasing it, manufacturing it, transferring it, or drop shipping it? And once I've determined what that source will be, I can set a specific warehouse, assuming I'm using multiple warehouses in Acumatica, and store the minimum, maximum order quantities, lot size, and lead time again, this time at the item level, not specific to any one vendor. And if there's any seasonality to this item, maybe I have different seasonalities that come into play for replenishment, I can set those here as well. So if I've configured a season, and that's going to determine what levels safety stocks I want to keep in the warehouse depending on what season it is, that can all be tracked on the inventory planning as well. If you're familiar with older versions of Acumatica, the inventory planning tab is a rename from the MRP settings that were in prior versions. From here, if we want to configure a deferral, we can configure that here as well with predefined deferral codes. Here are some examples here. If we have 12 months evenly, we're going to see all that information come into play with our inventory ID revenue components down below. And then, of course, GL, another element that was defaulted by the item class all the way at the beginning of this session where we picked that on the general tab. When I picked my item class and I can open that up again, I'm going to see the posting class linked to that item class. The posting class is where those GL accounts live. So when I drill into that posting class, I'm going to see all of the defaults that came over when I selected my item class, which again are defaults. So they can be changed. You do not have to stick with what the item class gave you, but it does provide those required values. So you're at least able to save the item and then tweak from there. Some other tabs that we have a little bit hidden in this arrow over button here on the right hand side, we have our service management settings, any restriction groups may, we may want to associate with this item account, and then finally the description tab. The description, not to be confused with the description we have up above, can be very useful for a more lengthy description. Maybe you want to use it for e-commerce as an example. We can have paragraphs, bold, italics, underline, highlighting, paragraphs, all different formatting that's not going to be available in the shorter description up in the header above. So this can be very useful if you'd like to write a little bit more about your item and maybe sync that through an integration or an API. And finally, now that we've gone through all of the tabs of our items, it's always important to not forget about some of these buttons at the top of our screen, even though they are found on all different screens throughout Acumatica. Those being, of course, the ability to upload a file and attach it against this item record, storing activities, and of course, notes. And the, the nice thing about storing a note on master data is the ability to add a pop-up note. So anytime I select this item on a transaction, I'm gonna get a message that pops up on my screen if there's anything critical or important you wanna remind users when they are selecting and using this item. That is going to be the entirety of the stock item screen at a high level. If you have any questions about creating inventory items, don't hesitate to reach out to the mayor group and we're happy to answer those questions for you. But make sure to give this video a like if it helped a higher level understanding of the stock item screen and make sure to subscribe to the mayor group YouTube channel for future tutorials coming as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial.